new week, new video. Welcome to my search for me. My name is Idelma Denmar. Last week we saw the first part of the interview with Arvind de Velia. I hope you enjoyed it. I would love to hear back from you what your thoughts are and if it gave you any valuable insights. If you missed it, please do go back. You can watch it and otherwise stay tuned for the second part. In the second part of the interview with uh, Arvin, we will be talking about several things. Actually, we will be talking with him about one of my favorite topics, focus. He will be sharing some of his practical tips, how he deals, deals with challenges like staying focused and how he applies that in his own life. We also will be talking about what he calls the three C's when it comes to life. What is life really all about? Well, I hope you enjoy it and uh, do let me know uh, what you think about this interview. Feel free to share it with others who could also learn from the insights in this interview. And please do go to the Facebook fan page to like the page, to stay up to date about all the developments and all the videos that I'm posting. And uh, yeah, have fun watching this video. Um, someone asked me what under what's my philosophy, so I came up with my three C's, as I call them. So it's all about connection, connecting people, connecting with a deeper purpose. It's about uh, contributing, contributing to people around you, the big, bigger community, yeah. and also celebration. Celebrate. Because you got to have fun in life. You got to. You really, otherwise, what's the point? You know, I know some people who go through life, they feel they've had to suffer, but you don't have to suffer. Mm -hmm. And look at this, I mean, we're sitting in a beautiful garden, and this is celebration of life. Absolutely. What, 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 more does, what more does one want? Yeah. And once you become present to that and be, be grateful for what you have and appreciate what you have in your life, I think life becomes a lot easier. I think especially the appreciation part. I think a yes. lot of people go through life without even realizing what mm -hmm. they already have sure. in front of them. That's uh, very beautiful. So let's, <coughs> let's go back a little bit because you talked about uh, your little journey and uh, the moment that you decided that you wanted to do more for other people. Uh, you talked about the coaching that you do and, and a little bit about your book as well. Um, but uh, along the way, I mean, uh, going from uh, working in, in the internet uh, market or internet industry to starting your own company and really being a coach, I can imagine that along the way there were some struggles or some hurdles mm -hmm. to overcome. Can you mention a couple and how you managed to stay focused on the end goal? I think my biggest challenge has been to focus on one thing. Okay. Because uh, I feel I've got so many talents in so many different ways and I tend to disperse my energy in too many things, too many different areas, too many people it's about as well, you know, in fact. Yeah. So remaining focused and just coming focusing on one thing and doing that really, really well. Mm -hmm. That's been my biggest learning. Okay. And how did you manage to do that? Or what, how do you by, focus now? Uh, now I focus by being very ruthless with my own time and making sure that I only do one thing that's going to make the biggest difference to me and others. Yeah. So right now it's my coaching. My coaching is my priority right now. I'm building yeah. up my coaching practice even more. I'm looking at how to serve, a, serve people who want to make a bigger impact in the world. So coming always comes back to your bigger purpose. Yeah. What I find is that once I know what I want to do, then simple practical things like switching off my phone mm -hmm. or getting off social media. Yeah. It's so easy to spend time on Facebook and before you know it, an hour has gone by and you haven't really achieved anything you want. Yeah. Another practical thing is not to spend all your time in emails, going back and forth. Get out of your inbox. Yeah. Look at your inbox maybe only two, three times a day. Yeah. Obviously, if you know there's something important that's coming along, then you check, check them. Yeah. 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 Okay. And a related point is keeping your space very clear, clear and decluttered and yeah. clean. We have so much stuff in our life, lives, I tell you. And I say to clients when I start working with them, I say the biggest single thing that you could do in your life is to let go of stuff you don't no longer need. And that includes physical things in your house, in your car, includes uh, digital clutter on your laptop, on your phone, mm. people, letting go of people who no longer serve you. Yeah. Just having very clear boundaries. Yeah. Even with the family, family members, have clear, clear boundaries. Yeah. 
and also have an audit of all your relationships. It might sound a bit harsh, but some people drain us and some people energize us. Yeah. So look at that. It's, I think it's important to become aware of that because a lot of people don't realize that some people indeed take energy out of you, whereas others you can talk with them for hours and hours and it's so sure. much fun and yeah. so much energy. And it all comes back to what you use, being aware, becoming aware, becoming aware of what's going on around you, within you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and along the way, I mean, you have a very clear vision and, and you know what the next steps are for you, also looking at the future. Have you ever had the feeling that um, you wanted to stop because it was quite hard uh, being an entrepreneur and the little many challenges? Times, many times I felt like maybe I should just go and get a job again and yeah. work in And how did you corporate. overcome that or how did you stay focused and decide, no, this is for me, so I'm going to go for it no matter what? I think every time I feel like that, I become more determined to do more of what I'm doing yeah. and remain focused on what my bigger purpose is. And to be honest with you, there's nothing wrong with working in the corporate world no, or working in a, working for someone else. It's just that's not where I where I have been up to now. Yeah, I've been there, done it. Yeah, and the way for me, way for for me is to do more work in the corporate world as a coach, as a as a trans someone who transforms people and corporates. Yeah. So that would be the, the link with the corporate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, a little bit about your book and about your coaching. I mean, uh, I'm a big fan of uh, this book that you gave me when we met four each other ago, yeah. four years ago. A signed copy. I have it in my closet. Get the life you love and live it. Um, yeah, can you tell me a little bit more? I mean, there are so many <coughs> personal development books out there and I can give my little view on this book. I think it's great, but what makes it different than okay, any so other book? So this book has been out there for 10 years now. Yeah. And it still continues to sell really well on Amazon. And it was the number one Amazon bestseller in its category, in its Amazon category. Mm -hmm. And as you said, there are literally thousands of books out there like this. Yeah, similar. And people ask me the same thing. So I tell them, well, actually, you can go and choose any other book like this, and more or less it's the same thing. But mine's unique to me in a couple of ways. Firstly, it's not just another reading book which you read and then you put away. It's a workbook, as I call it. It's got... Uh, yeah. Show you on this. It's got... Uh, worksheets that you yes. fill in and I call it my playbook it's not even a workbook workbook implies it's work just a playbook so people readers what I found is that they've gone through the book and because they've started taking action and writing down things in the book mm -hmm. changes happen much quicker it actually go and change something in their life it makes them really think yes. and the second way it's different is that a lot of my life story is integrated into the book so I'm not saying go and do this and this will work but I'm saying look this is what I did mm -hmm. this is where I could have done better and this is what really worked for me yeah. so i'm sharing my personal anecdotes and people like you and others who've gone through the book they kind of got to know me really well because i'm sharing myself i've been very vulnerable in the yeah. book, which makes it very accessible i'm not someone who's pretending to be high and mighty i'm just another ordinary guy who's had a few life challenges who's had some amazing successes mm -hmm. and i'm sharing it from a very personal viewpoint and being very vulnerable so people get that yeah. And I think that's what makes it a very approachable and humane book. And it keeps continuing to sell well. And one of my intentions is to get it out there much more. I feel that there's a lot of mileage in doing much more with, with what's in there already. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I have read the book and I think it's, it is different indeed because it's mm -hmm. more like a workbook, like you yeah. said. So I didn't come across that yet. So, so I mean, yeah, and great. also some of the content is all universal universal i mean we can call it spiritual or whatever label you want to give some of these uh, life principles that they find to read out a couple of the chapters one chapter is give and receive all the world's spiritual texts religious books they always talk about giving and i'm also saying look give and receive that's what life is about what right. you give you need comes both. back yeah another one is gratitude adopt an attitude of gratitude so if we adopt it uh, if you come from a place where you always in gratitude for what you have, then not only do you feel better, but so much of it comes back to you anyway. Yeah. Uh, look, look where we are now. I'm mean, totally in gratitude for where we are right now. This very moment is such an amazing, magical day today. Yeah. I mean, what's there to be not great, grateful for? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. So that's great. That's the book. And a, a little bit about, about your coaching with you because you mentioned that as well a couple of times. Uh, what is coaching with Arvind all about? Sure. So, looking at what I do and offer, 
when people first hear about me, they can go to my blog and they can learn more about what I do. And this, there are exactly 600 articles on my blog right now. So there's so much content there. So if they never even get in touch with me, they can read the blog and there's so much value they yeah, can get from that. Much and then they can get the books and then they can get my personal coaching. Mm -hmm. And I work with people who are high impact making, high achievers. And I work with them for say three to six months minimum. Yeah. And we work very deep. So it's not just about their uh, external goals, their initial goals, but about what their life is about. Yeah. And getting clear about their bigger picture, their bigger goal. Okay. Just getting them to share what they probably never shared with anyone else ever before. Yeah. Okay. And how do you define high achievers? People who go, get up and do things. Um, people who are already quite successful, or people who know they can be really successful. Yeah. So I work with people who are high energy and people who want to go out and do things. And okay, of course, people can come to me who feel they might not be in that category, but the coaching will get that out from them. Beautiful. So um, now I want to move on to the second part of the interview. We heard a little bit about you, your own little history, how you got to where you are today, what you have to offer, and, and the different things. Um, <coughs> yes, this was the second part of the interview with Arvind. A couple of things he mentioned. We talked about focus, some of the practical tips like eliminate distractions and email. But we also talked about what he calls the three C's in life. He said that connection, uh, contribution and celebration, that's what it's really all about. And I believe that's pretty much true. When you think about connection, you can think about connection with others with a bigger purpose than yourself. When we um, talk about contribution, in the end, we all want to contribute to something beyond ourselves, you know, a bigger goal, a bigger mission in our lives. And the last one, celebration, um, it's also good to stop on a regular basis and be aware of everything that you already have. Just being thankful for where you are right now in your life and um, you might be much richer than you than you realize that you are so that's also actually my little exercise my little homework that i want to give you is come up with a list of all the things that you can be grateful for and try to do that on a regular basis and you will see that you will feel so energized so alive so so happy inside and that will give you energy to achieve more wonderful things in your life and continue to go after your dreams so yeah that's something that i wanted to share with you in the final part of the interview we're going to get personal with arvind he will be talking about some of the greatest achievements in his life he will also be talking about he mentioned it a couple of times but um, the whole history behind the annual picnic that he uh, organizes now for a long, yeah, for many, many years has been organizing. So how something small started um, and eventually grew out to something big where so many people get together and have fun and connect. It's a very beautiful initiative um, that I've attended myself. And um, yeah, I will be uh, asking a more question also about finding your life purpose. So next week you can expect me to post it again. In the meantime, be well, share your insights, go to the Facebook fan page or to the YouTube channel. And uh, I hope to see you again very soon.